Hey boys, so today we're going to be having a look at the runes for the latest special league for 007 here, aka Mr. on Twitch. Uh, you guys have seen me play on his account a couple of times now. He managed to secure and get his very first G3 special league finish. We'll start through. So some of these were niche picks uh, in case he one of the units or uh, the Oliver got stolen and he wanted a different sort of CC unit or a pushback unit. He would sometimes bring the Poseidon here. So this is on a despair will set. You'll see in a minute uh, on a speed, crit damage and attack build. These are the artifacts. So you see here, basically all of his CC units were on Will and was trying to outspeed him. He would pivot into more of a turn two play style and then ban their stripper. This is just his Taor as well on a swift Will set here. Uh, so everything's kind of speed tuned. Taor doesn't need a lot of crit right now, especially because of the, the new buff, the guaranteed crit on skill two if the unit's under CC. With a reasonable amount of accuracy, uh, he might have some extra accuracy, a little bit more here on the uh, right side artifact as well. And this is just on a speed, crit damage, and attack build as well. So really, really high attack on all these units. Basically, the idea of the team is that your opponent doesn't take a turn. So you kind of tend to favor, uh, especially on your damage dealers, really high attack, as much damage as you can possibly get out. And then on your CC units, you want to go for as many additional damage uh, as, as you can on either side here. So this is Tyrone on a violent will set. Uh, so this is was his... He picked Tyrone virtually every match that he could. The Ashir... Tyrone Azalea combo uh, was was devastating basically probably strongest first three picks that you could pick especially free to play options in this in the 20 star special league just gone because it left you with 10 stars still available to pick two nat fives as your last two picks pretty pretty strong here on the speed HP accuracy build with some additionals by speed on this side and then just some more additionals on the left side here as well next we have Samath Samuth, so uh, just sometimes there if you're really contesting first turn and they've already taken the Oliver or something like that, you might want to use it. Uh, it's also pretty good for those teams that don't have any sustain in their team and you basically use Samuth to nuke them. So when they eventually have to kill Samuth, he, he can just kill them at the end there. You just do chip damage over the course of the match and then eventually, yeah, like I said, you can kind of one-shot one him here at the end. So he'll be on uh, attack, crit damage, and attack. Uh, some skill 3 crit damage on this side and a little bit of more crit damage and some attack proportional to lost uh, HP on the left side here. Pretty solid. Now, more more was one of his stronger picks as well. Very, very strong unit. Um, fast enough here that he basically is in... Obviously, you want your strippers in front of everything here. The more the Azalea and the Gina were the main three strips in the team with the Joe Gun as a bit of a flex pick if, it was, if he needed the scroll trap. The Triton as a flex pick if they were really going fast and he wanted to push that first turn even more um, and then the Chung Pung is sort of like a pseudo stripper as well and more always on a speed attack attack build with the recent buff to Douglas uh, this is definitely the best way to be building your more in RTA right now he hard counters Douglas like this um, you build him with as, as much attack as you can possibly get so he very rarely does glance as well as with the skill one attack break once he lands that on onto the Douglas Basically, then you can just take him out um, pretty easily after that. And then other than that, you just stack it as many additionals as you can as well on him. His, his skill two being the multi-hit and on a very low cooldown, uh, you do cycle that pretty fast. So you just want as much additionals out as you can. The C on here, uh, just just to stand the C on as much attack as you can possibly get. Enough accuracy, you do get the 50% accuracy bonus with skill two when he puts his bombs on as well. So just to stand C on as much attack as you can possibly get. Uh, Fatal's fine. The premium build is the violent will build, but I mean that's if you got god tier violent runes. Other than that, you're better off going for the fatal set and just stacking as much damage as you can and on attack, attack, attack build. Um, and maybe some extra bomb damage on this side, not too much. His artifacts um, could do a little bit of upgrading there, I think. Um, and then a little bit more on this side too, but is is what it is. You know, it's enough damage. He's a super niche pick in this particular team. The uh, L U N. So the, he's he's not too bad, uh, especially for in the twenty star league. You know, being a three star unit, sometimes uh, you you are stuck at the end there with only having to bring a three star unit. And he is an incredibly strong CC unit for being only three stars with his skill three with the pushback, um, as well as the stun on that as well. The stun on the skill two, and then also the extra uh, just damage here, basically on skill one. So he's a very, very uh, strong, strong unit, and a great pick in the twenty star league in particular because he only takes up three of your stars. So he is on a speed, crit rate, and attack build, and then just some more additionals again on either side here. 
Next, we have the uh, the Azalea. She is one of the the core picks, basically, in this team. Like I said, you, it's the the Ashir, the Tyrone, and the Azalea is his first three picks, strongest picks for him anyway in this particular CC Cleave team. And so basically, you just want her as much damage as you can with the additionals here on either side. And you can now he's gone for the Despair build here. Some people favor the Violent. I prefer the Despair build as well. The skill uh, three. Where is it? The skill three here, it hits so many times, so you do a lot of damage as it is. Um, and and so many chances, with a 40% chance, four to six times to strip something as well. So it's a very consistent stripper, as well as lands the slow debuff. Um, and then if you have it on despair runes as well as that, strip, slow debuff, and stun, it's just it's just too much. It's devastating, and, and you can quite often win the match just with that one, one skill straight off the bat there. It just sets it up perfectly for the rest of your team. And sets up that, that they, they never move, and if they do get a, eventually get a turn, they're stunned. So then they're not, then they're praying for violent procs uh, if they happen to be on violent to potentially get them out and try and win on the match here. Um, and yeah, so she's on a speed, HP, and accuracy build here as well. So max accuracy on all the units here that kind of matter. Um, he's got no more accuracy, here, so he's missing five. But max accuracy on the units that kind of matter here: the strippers and the CC units, uh, the hard hard CC units as much accuracy as you can get on them. Uh, and then on the damage dealing sort of pseudo CC units, you can drop a little bit of accuracy there because you kind of want the damage out of those. So you sacrifice a little bit one to give to the other there. Uh, next he has a Swift Verd. So didn't really use this too often. Um, the Ashir in the 20 star league basically takes the role of a Swift Verd in the CC cleave team from a Swift Verd CC cleave. Uh, because Ashir is only a three star, it's, it's more efficient in the 20 star league. And, and it also gives you much stronger first turn potential where in, in the special league in particular people tend to cleave a lot more so you run into a lot more people really competing for first turn in regular RTA the meta is a little slower so you, you get more value out of the verd in that sense um, but in this league in particular the issues were sort of the way to go however he did have this ruined up here ready to go just in case he wanted to use it as well the, uh, let me just show you the rune. So this is on a swift nemesis build. So the nemesis actually does come in pretty handy here. If they do happen to outspeed you and then they hit you AOE, the Verd can quite often cut. This did win him a fair few matches this season where his Verd will then cut and then because he takes a turn, boost your entire team. So then your entire team actually gets the cut as well. So the nemesis build is actually pretty, pretty nice here if you can get it on and still have it fast enough that it makes sense on a speed, crit rate, and attack build. Again, you kind of want really high attack on your Verd here for the for all the Douglases sort of getting around right now. So really high attack on, on any of the units, as many as you can. Uh, and then just some additional damage here by attack on, on either side and some more additionals here. Next is the Jogun. This is one of those niche uh, picks where you probably don't want the more, you don't need the more there necessarily, and you want the uh, scroll trap. So into things like pot potentially like a Molly, uh, maybe an Antares, a Kinky, just that sort of stuff. Maybe there's a maybe you you're recognizing that there's a revenge vert on the other side, and you don't want to run the risk of hitting it and having it revenge you. Then you would probably take the Jogun over the more instead in that particular instance. There's not too many though. A lot of the time you'd rather have the more just because of the the extra damage that he provides, as well as the bit of pushback that he provides. It's typically more and the speed lead too. It's typically better value. But in like I said, niche situations, you do want to take the Jogun. Again, just speed tuned uh, to the rest of the team. Really good accuracy on a speed HP HP build. Uh, next, we have the Charlotte. Charlotte's probably the strongest CC unit in the game right now outside of Light Monkey King. Um, but for the natural element units, she's definitely the best CC unit with her skill three uh, pushing back, multi-hit pushback, as well as putting the glancing on. And then skill two with the slow plus the stun. So you have two really strong CC AOE skills in both 3 and 2 and then the skill 1 turn cycling where if she happens to land the sleep she gets the proc so 35% chance to put the enemy to sleep for one turn and then also procs her an extra turn so her turn cycling it can be actually insane and she'll cycle her skills very very fast and just she alone can, can fully CC a team on a speed HP and HP build again with additionals on either side here so the, the theory with this team is is basically most of the time you don't end up bringing one of the pseudo cc damage dealing dealer units you just 
typically favor full CC, and then you just get all your damage comes out with the additional damage artifacts on either side on these units. Next we have Triton on a Swift Broken set. Like I said, he's only there for if you really want to compete that first turn. Uh, if they're looking like they're trying to go faster and you want to try and outspeed them because you're already too committed, then, then you can bring the Triton here. So he's obviously just on a speed defense accuracy build it doesn't really matter too much what his stats are uh, as long as he's fast enough to take first turn that's always there for next we have champung again really good accuracy he's one of the uh really good cc units in the game as well obviously with the reset the only time you'd probably bring him over the charlotte if you're looking for a cc unit is if there was a lot of things out there uh maybe like a samath uh, an abelio a triana things like that that you want to actually get a reset on them as well as well as providing the backup stripper so if they happen to ban out one of your strippers and one misses then you have the chung pung there just for a backup just in case as well it's pretty nice and everyone knows chung pung's an incredibly strong unit uh on a speed hp and accuracy build next we have oliver uh oliver's you know everyone knows oliver's broken right now he's incredibly strong uh, the ability to turn cycle full resets on, on and control multiple units on the other side of the field while only having to actually target one at a time. So he's the weakness typically in with a lot of AOE units is having to hit things that you don't want to hit like Douglas and that sort of stuff. With Oliver being a single target, it's incredibly strong um, that, that he can, like I said, control the other side of the field without touching things that you don't want to touch. Uh, so he's on a violent wheel set as well. Speed attack and HP with some accuracy on his skill three here and just some additionals on this side. So max accuracy on his skill three, which is the important one. And then just other than that, just stats. A lot of people build them on crit rate or crit damage build, not necessary. He, he does so much damage as it is. He's got really good multipliers. Um, so just you're better off just going for a lot of efficiency. Uh, HP to survive is nice. And then, and then just enough attack as well that you do enough damage here. So this is kind of like the ideal build, I think for an Oliver. You could probably drop some of the crit rate there uh, in, and, and go for a little bit extra attack. I think it would be a bit more efficient, but it, it is what it is and, and pretty pretty solid across the board here. Next we have the Ashia. So this is one of the, like I said, this was the, the first pick, probably the most contested unit in Special League just gone. Um, so he is on a Swift Broken set here. The speed, HP, HP, just as fast as you can get him, as tanky as you can get him. Um, with with an okay amount of accuracy and like subs is all right because he does have the skill three strip that is pretty important. The heal block can be used sometimes as well into things like Molly and Kinky. It's pretty strong, so a little bit of accuracy doesn't hurt. But but other than that, as much speed and as much HP as he can. Again, you get all the damage out of him out of additionals. Additional damage by speed and additional damage by HP is what you want to try and stack on him as much as possible. So next we have Shan. He's a pretty strong CC unit here as well with his skill three plus the speed buff on your team. Um, and now with the recent buff to him, he auto crits on any stunned unit as well. So you can drop a lot of crit rate off of him and still get really good value out of having running him on a crit damage build. And then you can sacrifice that crit rate to increase the accuracy as uh, to, to make sure that that skill three stun is, is pretty reliable as well. Other than that, you can just stack as much uh, HP, as much attack as you can, get it nice and efficient across all of his stats here. So he's got some extra accuracy on skill three whilst having some skill two crit damage, perfect artifact for him. Uh, and then some additional damage on this side, some own target crit damage and a speed up effect. And he is on a speed crit damage and attack build. Next we have the Kabila. He only really brings this if his Ashia ever gets taken. Basically a uh, direct replacement for the Ashia on a speed defense and accuracy build. I'm assuming the accuracy is just because that happened to be his fastest rune that he had available there with a Swift. Don't really need it for the Kabila, but it is. it does have, offer a defense break, so it's probably not the worst thing in the world. And, and just basically it's there to be fast. You've got to outspeed things. If you're bringing Kabila, you have to be taking first turn. So as fast as you can get it, and then you can stack some additionals on the, either side for this unit as well with the multi-hit on both skill one and skill two. Next we have Tablo on a Violent Nemesis build. A um, bit slower here, so I don't know how often he used this. Uh, I think it was just there to, to maybe if he wanted the extra 24 speed lead, um, or I'm not too sure. Like I said, I don't think he really used it too often, but just there as an option. It is a pseudo CC. Obviously, with the pushback, it does offer a skill to stun as well, AOE stun. Um, so 
pretty strong unit overall, and it's got a decent set on it, pretty good HP. It'd just be speed cheating for the rest of his box to go last. So the advantage of having a tableau move last is, is you get your whole team gets to move, and then he pushes everybody back, and then your whole team gets to move again before their team does, as opposed to tableau going first, which just pushes them back and gives your team one turn. So this gives your whole team two turns. Uh, so he's on a speed, HP, HP build. Uh, and again, just some more additionals. You can see the common theme here, basically additionals, additionals, additionals on anything that multi-hits, uh, especially with these CC cleave teams, that's the strategy. And then some more additionals on this side. Next was Gina. She was one of the uh, one of the stronger units, honestly, in Special League Just Gone, being a three star. Uh, the rune requirements on her were a lot higher because of her base speed being so low and her being a stripper. She does need to move first in your team or at least before all of your CC units. So she did require one of your fastest violent will sets to make her work. But because of that, she gets her skill two strip and then also offers a CC damage on skill three here. With all these dots here, she gets four dots for two turns. So that's that's 40% health that she'll do with her skill three. They have to take two turns to receive that if you land everything. But she also CCs them for one turn with the sleep here after you strip. So she's kind of like a free to play Chun Pong if you look at it that way. Um, doesn't have the reset, but she's actually a more reliable strip than him with a 100% strip chance. Only one thing though, so it is typically have to be moving first. Um, not necessarily into things like a Woosa where they've got two buffs on them. Once they have multiple buffs on her, she's not as strong. But moving first, she's incredibly strong. Puts the strip into the buff block too. And then offers a hell of a lot of follow-up with her skill 3, the dots and the sleep. So she's, like I said, on the Violent Will set. On a speed, attack and accuracy build. And even her, she's a multi-hitter on skill 3 as well. So she really scales well off additional damage as well on either side here. And then lastly, we have the Verosa. So just a four-star stripper here. Uh, and casing again, just depending on which units he took here, he needed to bring either a four-star stripper, a five-star stripper, um, four or five-star CC units, potentially a three-star CC unit. So he's got all the options here ready to go just in case he needed them. And that's that's why he was able to hit G3 here because it didn't really matter what people, how they pivoted around him. He was still able to adapt and pivot on the fly. And, and fix up and changed what he was doing and bring certain units that counted other units. And but so basically he's got a complete box here ready to go, all speed tuned to each other where the strippers move first, the CC move next, and there's damage dealers all follow basically after after everything like that. So just on a despair build here, um, pretty high HP just to try and survive. So I think we'll have we'll see here in a second. It's probably got a lot of additionals on either side as well. On a speed HP HP build. And then, yeah, just quite a quad line of additionals on this side here and then some more additionals on this side here. So that's the entire monster box. That's what he was using to get G3. Let's watch the last match here of the uh, season. We can see exactly how he did it. Against Mother G, no less. Shout out, Mother G. So the Ashia first pick into the Tyra and the Azalea. This is what I was saying, the strongest opening three here. Uh, because the, the Azalea strip slow allows you to use Tyrone's pushback immediately. Um, requiring the slow on the units here. So we'll see if he lands it and then and then how he proceeds. So he lands the full strip with the more and the despair stuns already. Okay, doesn't land the slows there, but this is where he gets the backup from the Tyrone. So he's now frozen everybody, taken one turn away from them. Starts piling in some damage onto the Lulu. The Lulu was the biggest threat for CC Cleave. Uh, gets rid of that first. Misses the heal block there. This is what I was saying with the heal block from Mashir can come in handy into the molly. Uh, he did miss it there, but that's okay. He's already back to more skill th skill two here, and he's landed some more despair stuns uh, on on the both the Samuth and the Molly. So he's basically just controlling everybody here with hard CC out of Tyrone, and then pseudo CC out of both the Maw and the Azalea despair stuns. So you can see the other side here. Virt Mother virtually didn't take a turn at all, and now she's only got the Samuth bomb to come back. But because they've got so much HP, it's just not enough here. Now it's just a matter of time. And there it is. That was his last match. Secured him his first G3 Special League. And there it is, boys. That's all the runes and the uh, the final match of how he did it. Do me a favor, boys. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. And make sure you hit a like. Drop a comment for 007, aka Mr. Below. And I'll see you in the next one, boys. Thanks.